Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, today what we're going to do is have a look at the getting text to follow the camera around the scene um, using the text renderer and the find look at rotation node. Now this is a great way just to set up sort of like um, maybe health bars, a follow health bar on top of a character's head so it's always pointing at you or maybe you want to set up a text label above an object so as you walk by it you can give sort of like a tip to the player to say I, I don't know either you might want to put it above a pickup say the gun name or even just a, a helpful message to say press this key to pick me up or what, what a description of what the item is health ammo you know that, that's such a thing um, right so without further ado let's just jump straight into it what I've gone and done is already opened up a third person blueprint template but you could have any template you want this will work on any of them and the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a fresh brand new blueprint which is going to keep everything together for us so I'm just going to right, right click in the content browser and open up a blueprint class I'm just going to pick an actor just to keep things simple but this again this will work on almost anything um, so we'll go ahead and pick act. I'm going to call this one just to simply follow text and I'm going to open that up. I'm just going to parent this to the main window and then we've got our basic blueprint. So the first thing I'm going to do is add component and I'm just going to add a static mesh and I'm going to pick the mesh over on the right hand side and I'm just going to pick the one meter cube with a chamfer uh, that's just a smooth edge cube that you should see already in the default scene and then along with that I'm going to add another component and I'm going to search for text and the only option that comes up should be text renderer um, now once that's in your scene it'll actually be buried inside the cube to start with just because by default its location has defaulted to the center of the scene which is inside the center of the cube. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up so it's just outside the cube um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the alignments so at the moment it's currently um, left aligned and it's set to the bottom of the um, of the text so the, the origins at the bottom left so I'm going to change that to center alignment for the horizontal and for vertical alignment I'm also going to pick center as well. Um, this is a personal preference, you don't have to change this, I just find that when we actually apply the, uh, the, the follow character that it has, it has a better effect but you, you're more than welcome to leave this as, as is. I'm also going to change the text to something basic like this is a cube. Oh, I've got an extra letter there that I don't need. So there we go, this is a cube. And I'm actually going to move that up just a little bit more. So it's just there floating above the cube. That looks great. Um, okay, so with that being with that being done, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into my scene real quick. I'm just going to drag that into the world and I'm going to drag that up and I'm going to press end. Ah, so just a little quick tip. So usually when you press the end key on your keyboard, what it would usually do is it'll, it'll set the height of your object to the next available plane. So what this what this means is, if it's all the way up here, when you press end, realistically it should drop it to about there. Now, that then should be flat on your surface. If it doesn't do that, it may be because you've not set the default scene room to your static mesh or to an object with a collider. So this is actually um, setting the the origin or the the, the the little white center point on the ground. Now this isn't what I want so I'm going to go back into my follow text I'm going to take the static mesh and I'm just going to drag it to the, the seam root and then it's become the seam root 
And then now, if I drag this up and press end, it sits perfectly flush on my floor. That's just a quick tip. Most objects uh, are like that, where you can press end um, and they'll, they'll just sit flush. Unless it's catching on the edge of an item here, where, again, um, it works on collisions, so it, it it's not flawless, but it helps to know that. Anyway, back to the point um, for the follow text. If I play the game now, what you'll what you'll notice is that while well, the text is backwards, if I go around here, I can see it now. But as I move around, you know, I, I can't I can't read that. So it'd be nice if we could get the text to, to follow us around. So let's just do that. So in the event graph, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to get it to calculate which way it should be facing for the character to see it. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this, uh, but I'm going to be using the uh, find look at rotation. So what we're going to do, we're going to be we're going to be changing the rotation of the text renderer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a set rotation. And I'm going to set the world rotation of the text renderer. Great. Now that expects a new rotation, so it's, it's expecting a new X, Y, and Z um, to rotate to. So I'm going to drag that over there, and you'll see why in a minute why I've left so much space. But we're going to use a find look at rotation. So. This finds a rotation of an object at a start location and to point at a target location. So realistically, we want to start at where we are, our current location in the world. So let's get our text renderer and get its world location. There we are. And that's going to be our starting point. I am currently here. Where do I want to look? Well, I want to look at the character. So let's get the player character. And then from the player character, let's get world location. And you've got capsule and um, mesh. Now, really, the mesh and the capsule are going to be in a similar space, so it's not really a big difference which one you pick. So I'm just going to pick mesh. I'm just going to make this a, a tiny bit neater by dragging them together like that. And then I'm going to drag the location of my mesh um, to the target. And then essentially, you can just plug this straight in. Um, now, this is going to work, but we're going to notice uh, something quite unusual when we get close to it. So, maybe the text colour we should change um, to something a bit more obvious because it's difficult to see. I say more obvious, but that, that's still difficult. So, anyway, as you can see, as we run around, we've got the text following us, but as we can also see, if I spin my camera around, the text is still backwards because it's actually following the character and that's because we use the mesh or the capsule, it doesn't matter, it'll still do the same thing, but that's my, that might be the effect you want wherever the character goes. This will be great for first person shooters because essentially your camera is your character so it, it might not make a huge difference that on FPS but on third person does look a little bit dodgy at times. So what we can actually do is instead of looking at the um, the player character, we can look at the camera. But before we do that, there is also one other thing we can do. Um, if you notice, just in case this is the effect you want, as you can notice, as you get closer to it, the text is actually tilting downwards, and that's because. In the centre of the character, in the centre of the mesh, is an origin point, and it's actually looking for the origin point. Now, there's two ways you can get around this. If you get rid of your mesh location, you can actually get socket location, and we can switch that to head. So the socket we want to look for is head. Now, knowing the Unreal third-person blueprint. Sorry, not the blueprint. Um, if we go back and we go to mannequin and character, and then mesh, and then skeleton. If we look at the skeleton and we click on the head, 
There is actually a socket name called Head. So, I've, I've searched for the socket name of Head. So what he's going to do is going to get the location of the head, which is going to be a bit higher up on the character. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, when we get closer, it's actually going to tilt upwards to, to, to sort of to aim towards the head. Now, although this is sort of somewhat of a fix, it might not necessarily be the thing we want. One other way you could do it is if you remove this uh, this connection between the rotator, you could split uh, both of these sort of inputs and outputs, and we don't want it to rotate around the pitch. And we could just say, well, just just roll roll and yaw, or just X and Z. Um, and and in and in some cases, it, it won't ever roll. Sorry, not in some cases. In all cases, it won't ever roll. It'll stay upright all the time. So that's another thing that you could do to counteract that. Other things you'd do, so to, to get back to the other point, if, if you want it to point at the camera rather than the player, if you get the player, um, sorry, not the player, if you get the camera manager, so basically the player camera manager, what that does is, Whichever character in the scene, or similar to how get player character gets the current player character and draws information from that, this gets the current player cameras, um, sorry, players camera, and then we can access uh, attributes and properties from that. So, because I'm currently the active player, which is index zero, um, we could return the get location and we want to get the world location transform com uh, component or camera location either one will work and then what we want to do oh I seem to have deleted the find rotate node so we'll find <laughs> look rotation put in our star location put in our target and then put in our new rotation Me. And if we now compile and play, you'll see that wherever the camera goes, we are being followed. So, in a sense, no matter where the character goes, the camera will always be able to see what the text says. So we will always know that this is a cube. Now, we've used this to set up a text label, but in effect, this can be used to set up anything that requires it to follow or track another object. Now here all we're doing is we're following the player or the, the player's camera. There's nothing to say that you can't set up a sentry gun to track the player. If they're within a certain radius that can be done. Um, you know the possibilities for using this are, are, are almost endless. Um, if, you, if you'd like to see how I'd use this to set up like a sentry gun with a proximity if a player is within that area. Let me know down in the comments um, and, and, I, and I'll make that video um, and also can consider subscribing so you don't miss when I do make that video if, if you, that's something you'd like. Um, and that's pretty much it for, for this video. So thanks for watching and I hope, I hope this helped. Um, if it did, give me a like so then I know. And See you in the next video. Thank you.